Now, after defining poetry, in the next section, William Wordsworth talks about the style of lyrical ballads. What is the style and structure of this lyrical ballads? And he says that in this collection of lyrical ballads or while writing this poetry, he has excluded certain things or certain aspects of poetry, of style, which were made mandatory by some poets of his age. For example, he says, personification of abstract ideas occurs rarely in lyrical ballads. He says, the reason for this is that we have personification of abstract ideas, ki hai, khayali baaton ke, wo kyun kam ki hai isme, uski wajah ye hai, kyunke ye jo art hai, personification of abstract ideas, ye us language mein bohat kam hota hai, jo language humne use ki hai. Aur humne jo language ki use ki hai, that is the language really spoken by the men. Now a language which is really spoken by a common man, he is not, you know, worried about the personification of abstract ideas, about the rhetoric devices, about the figure of speeches, about metaphors, about similes, about cynic docky, about all these things. So he says that we have re reduced the amount of usage of such things in lyrical ballads. We have rather attempted to write this lyrical ballad in a very plain, in a very simple, in a very lucid manner. Second, he says poetic diction. He says that we have also not used poetic diction in lyrical ballads. And again, the reasons for reason for not writing are using poetic diction in lyrical ballads the same because if you are using language really spoken by the common man you are not using the uh, you know poetic style of Alexander Pope or John Dryden who were very much careful about the poetic diction there was no need of poetic diction if I or if William Wordsworth was writing in a language really spoken by man and second reasons he said that reason he said why he did not use poetic diction was that the pleasure which i want to impart are the purpose that i have taken up for writing this lyrical ballad is very different from the purpose of the poets in general are uh, the purpose of the poets prior to him ab unka jo purpose tha wo kuch aur tha aur mera jo purpose hai wo kuch aur hai aur mere purpose mein ya mera jo purpose of giving pleasure that does not fit into the poetic diction into the choice of grand words in the choice of great words in the choice of you know sophisticated words Therefore, I did not use poetic diction in my poetry. Now, poetic diction means use of words or choice of words. Kya kis tarah ke alfaz jo hai poetry mein use karte ho? Agar main ek aam aadmi ke liye likh raha hu, to usko main aam bhasha mein bolunga. Ab uske liye main Alexander Pope ka diction use karna baithu, Miltonic seriousness use karna baithu, ya John Dryden ke phrases use karna baithu, to usko kuch samajh mein to aayega nahi. Now, if I have to express something for him, I have to express it in his own way, in his own language, so that he understands what. I have to say. Third, he says that there is little use of meter in lyrical ballads. Now, that was the most debatable issue or debatable topic that came out of preface to lyrical ballads or lyrical ballads. And William Wordsworth make a, made a statement that there is hardly any difference between the language of poetry and the language of prose. And he gives his reasons why he did not use uh, a meter. In his poetry, one would be the same that it's a language really spoken by common men. Second, he says that there were great poets who also used prosaic language in their poetry. For example, he gives a reference to John Milton. He says that John Milton often uses prose or prosaic form of writing even in his poetry. Secondly, he said that the best form of prose is not far from the metrical writing of poetry. जो अच्छा प्रोज होता है वो पोइट्री से कम नहीं होता या पोइट्री से अलग नहीं होता है और तीसरा वो रीजन देता है टॉमस ग्रे का वो कहता है कि टॉमस ग्रे जिसे विलियम वर्ड्सवर्थ कहता है कि ही वाज़ द लीडर ऑफ दोस पोइट्स हु सपोर्टेड द मीटर इन पोइट्री आर हु सपोर्टेड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पोइट्री एंड लैंग्वेज ऑफ प्रोज एंड ही कोट्स ए सोनेट a full sonnet of Thomas Gray titled In Vain to Me the Smiling Mornings Shine. And in this particular sonnet, he says that there are many instances where Thomas Gray himself fails to maintain the difference between the language of poetry and language of prose. He implies prosaic writing even in this sonnet. Now he says he's the greatest of the exponent. Our greatest of the proponent 
of the difference between a metrical composition and the prose writing fails to maintain that difference, fails to maintain that distinction, then I think uh, William Wordsworth says that he also deserves to be excused for this, for if someone finds it harsh and then he would reiterate his statement that uh, in essence there is no difference between the language of poetry and the language of prose.